Whoa. Wasn't it the Palmyra arch they put up in New York? And London. And I was thinking at first maybe it was just their testing ground for opening these certain dimensions that they couldn't get to via standard occult practices. Nimrod. Rising from destruction. I gave a phone call to the Institute for Digital Archaeology and they assured me that this arch is nothing to do with Baal, uh, that they actually changed those plans because of the backlash of the public so instead that they were going to now be building the Ark of Triumph was at, which is actually a Roman human achievement and nothing to do with pagan deities or Mesopotamia but listen to this news report this is how Palmyra looked as ISIL took control the triumphal arch before the group destroyed it Today, the 2,000-year-old arch from the Temple of Bell looks like this. And year old arch from the Temple of Bell looks like this. It is not the Temple of Baal. So, the news are just blatantly coming out with it uh, from the Temple of Baal. And I believe that the spiritual realm is in one or more of these dimensions that fold in on themselves. These dimensions that we don't know much about. We know about the four dimensions, length, width, height, and time. And we know a little bit about these six or seven other dimensions. We know that they're spatial. We know that they fold in on themselves. So they're not like length, width, or height. So with that being said, what I'm saying is the spiritual realm is in one or more of these dimensions we don't know much about. And what I'm thinking, this is my theory, is that Azazel, who is in the bottomless pit mentioned in Revelation, just so happens to be in a couple other dimensions which they can't get to. In other words, these demons and fallen angels that weren't cast into the bottomless pit, you know, the ones that didn't have the, the punishment mentioned in the book of Enoch, which Jude, by the way, tells us to read the book of Enoch. But the point is, is that I don't believe they can access it because this bottomless pit is sealed. And it says that the devil comes down in great wrath with the keys to open the bottomless pit. So what I'm thinking is that the that Azazel, his, friend, his buddies, I guess you would call them, Azazel and some of the worst demons, according to the Book of Jubilees, 90% of the demons were put in the bottomless pit. Only the 10% of the not-so-bad ones were left on Earth. So if you can imagine, you have the worst of them in this bottomless pit. Some of the main leaders, 200 fallen angels that came down on Mount Hermon, are in this bottomless pit. In another realm, another dimension. Okay, a dimension that the devil himself can't get to, at least not yet. But it says he's given the keys to the bottomless pit. So maybe these keys happen to be CERN, and that they're trying to crack the code to, to open these dimensions that they can't do in a standard form. Obviously, the standard form would be normal occultic practices where they can, you can obviously access Lucifer and the ones that haven't been thrown in the bottomless pit. But what about the ones that have? The ones that he wants to release in the end times. My friends, this is very, very sinister. The triumphal arch of Palmyra is only about 50 yards away from the Temple of Baal. It has been floodlit, bright red. Today is the Feast of Moloch, the first day of the blood sacrifice to the beast. This date around the time of Passover on April the 22nd, and then to illuminate it blood red in Trafalgar Square for three days and three nights, as well as, may I add, right in the position in Trafalgar Square where they p had a massive performance at Easter. They had the crucifixion played out right in the position in Trafalgar Square where now uh, as Pastor D is showing that they're sh they're, they've built this archway for three days and three nights that's been illuminated blood red uh, around the time of Passover. Today the 2,000 year old arch from the Temple of Bell. Nimrod. Rising from destruction. There is a passageway to the most evil place you can imagine. A gate behind which the demons wait. Just crazy, really, when, you know, I'm told on the phone that 
it's purely a Roman triumphal arch and nothing to do with Baal. But when you go to Rome, you go into the Colosseum and there's an exhibition saying, Rising from Destruction, Palmyra, Nimrod. Just before the Iraq War, a tomb was discovered which matched King Nimrod's as described in the Epic of Gilgamesh. In the desert where the Euphrates River once ran, they matched the geographic location and structure to the story found in the Epic of Gilgamesh. According to the text, the burial site was where the Euphrates River once split. Using a technique that involves magnetism, they're able to decipher what minerals were in underneath the sand to see where the riverbed once was. And remarkably, the tomb was right where the Euphrates splits. But before archaeologists could get much work done in excavating the site, the U.S. military took control of the area an eyewitness, who was part of the military, stated that they had collected Nimrod or Gilgamesh's DNA. And we have to ask ourselves, why are they collecting this DNA? Perhaps to clone Nimrod. According to the book of Revelation, chapter 17, verses 10 through 11, it speaks of seven kings, five are fallen, and one is, and the other is yet to come. This is during the Apostle John's time when it says, When he cometh, he must continue a short space, and the beast that was and is not, even he is the eighth, and is of the seven, and goeth into perdition. And then it says in Revelation 13, verse 3, And I saw one of his heads as if it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed. And all the world wondered after the beast. Now, Nimrod had his head cut off by Esau, and according to Israelite culture, cutting off the head is actually a wound to the head. So Nimrod qualifies as this first king that comes back as the eighth king, and he also qualifies as having the deadly wound that was healed if he was cloned using the same DNA that they found at the site. So this would make Nimrod the Antichrist, and I believe that some sort of fallen being would live in this cloned body. The other day I was researching uh, a completely different topic, and out of nowhere, God just told me something. And I thought I was quite curious what he said to me. I'm thinking to myself, am I hearing God right? It was completely off topic, unrelated to what I was researching. He had told me that this great pyramid that we see in Egypt is actually where the bottomless pit is. And of course, I never had actually heard anything like this or studied anything like this. And I was kind of curious at what I heard from God. So I was like, okay, I'm going to go check this out. You know, is there anybody that said anything like this in the past? And actually there has. Matter of fact, you see this thing in front of us here? It's called the Emerald Tablet. And this stuff is pre-Egypt. We're talking fallen angels here. That's why they have heads of animals. Sort of like you see in Revelation, certain angels have more than one head. Some have heads that are of animals. And this Emerald Tablet actually it looks a lot like Paleo Hebrew here which is really interesting as well <clears throat> uh, and I wonder if it is actually I haven't checked into it but uh, this tablet tells of a bottomless pit beneath the Great Pyramid okay and it's Thoth the Egyptian god of wisdom which is also called Hermes that the bottomless pit is another dimension that is actually located underneath the Great Pyramid. You can see within 
um, the book of Tobit and uh, the, the Bible itself and some other books that they would actually put these fallen angels often in a desert under the ground okay um, often in Egypt and just so happens the Great Pyramids in Egypt and it's it's all also a pillar uh, that's in the midst of Egypt but also on the border of Egypt because it's on the border between uh, two sides of Egypt so you have this great pillar which is the, the Great Pyramid which is pretty obvious that no humans built it because it's its tolerances are way too accurate for even machinery, our high-tech machinery today. We can't even make anything as accurate as it is. And we don't have any machinery to actually build it or pick up these massive stones. So obviously someone built it, uh, probably from a supernatural uh, respect. A lot of people think it might have been the fallen angels or the Nephilim. I actually kind of think it's actually God that built this pillar and actually put these fallen angels in an interdimensional space beyond, below it. And we even have the Emerald Tablets of Thoth, which is written at Paleo-Hebrew or Phoenician, uh, which some think is actually the language of heaven, where uh, it tells you that the bottomless pit is underneath the Great Pyramid. <laughs> it just tells you it's there. And it's it was written by uh, Hermes Trismegistus. Hermes being uh, the false god of knowledge. You know the knowledge of good and tree, uh, the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Uh, you know the serpent in the garden. Uh, which is Gad real, by the way, uh, if you look into it, using the secrets of Enoch, the book of Enoch. But at any rate, the point is, is that uh, I think that it's actually underneath the Great Pyramid, and perhaps they're trying to unlock this interdimensional space underneath the Great Pyramid to release these fallen angels for the end times revelation, where basically hell on earth starts. And it's going to be way different when they, they get on the scene. And of course, this transhumanism obviously plays into it because their whole point is to clone bodies for these beings. And if you know, I also did some research on this uh, back in the Afghan war. Uh, there's some soldiers that have uh, disclosed this information about them going to where Gilgamesh was buried. And Gilgamesh, of course, is Nimrod. So they found uh, where Gilgamesh was buried based on the Epic of Gilgamesh, and they found his body, and his body was very peculiarly well-preserved for uh, being dead for so long. It was very strange. Giant humanoid. They took his DNA uh, back in, you know, like 2001. Uh, so, it, you know, we're talking about 2001, 2002, somewhere in there. They took his DNA, and who knows what they've already cloned from it. <laughs> you know what I mean? So we're talking about Nephilim clones, or fallen angel offspring clones, or fallen angel clones. I don't know. I don't know how Nimrod, I think, would be a fallen angel offspring. So these bodies would be obviously satanic already because they're part fallen angel, and uh, they can put these. Uh, spirits or whatever you want to call from the bottomless pit in these bodies so you get this is perhaps how the Antichrist is going to come back it makes sense because you know if you take into consideration what Revelation says he had a deadly head wound and then it was healed right and a lot of people just assume deadly head wound is uh, you know like you got hit on the head or you know your eyes out or some gouged out eye or something like that. they're thinking like your head was hurt in reality in Hebrew uh, a deadly head wound can include your head being chopped off. So, <laughs> if his head was chopped off, which is actually how Nimrod died, by the way. Um, yeah, so we t we're talking about uh, Nimrod being cut up, right? If you if you look into this topic, you have Simiramis. She could find all the body parts, but she couldn't find the the wanker, right? She couldn't find the wanker. <laughs> And that's why you have these obelisks, you know, in Rome and all over, even in Washington, D.C., right? The obelisk. But at any rate, getting back to this, um, uh, so you have uh, his head was cut off. And who killed Nimrod, by the way? If you, if you look into who killed Nimrod, brothers Jacob and Esau, Esau, Esau killed Nimrod. You know, Esau was a mighty hunter also. And he was out and he saw, he saw Nimrod and he killed him. And uh, so I think Nimrod was already older in age at that point, but Esau killed him. And then after that, and this is in, the, I think, is it, the book of, is it the book of Jubilees or Jasher that says this? I can't remember which one. One of those two books tells you that Esau killed Nimrod. 
At any rate, right after he killed Nimrod, he was so hungry he went back home and he sold his birthright uh, to his brother Jacob for porridge, for some food that Jacob was cooking. So, um, at any rate, so Esau's the one that killed him and he chopped his head off and I think his body was also chopped up or something and then that's why they couldn't find the wanker or whatever. <laughs> This whole story about that, and I, that leads to the whole obelisk thing that the Freemasons have all over, all around the earth. At any rate, so the point is, is that I think Nimrod is the Antichrist. I think they cloned his body, and I think once they've opened this this bottomless pit using CERN, the spirit will enter this cloned body, and then he will become the Antichrist. So this is where I think the whole Antichrist comes from. And it actually makes sense because Nimrod's about the only person that can fit uh, the Antichrist, all the, all the things required for the Antichrist. 